bloody buddies. Welcome to another episode of Rotting Flesh Movie Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing Friday the 13th Part 2, made in 1981, one year later, directed by Steve Miner. Something I forgot to mention in my review of the first film, they made a surprise ending where Jason jumps into the lake at the end and attacks the heroine, Alice. <laughs> She wakes up in the hospital, unsure of whether what she just saw was a dream or an actual memory. Well, my little friends, this film takes place five years after the murders conducted by Pamela Voorhees at Camp Crystal Lake. And as I said, our character Alice, she lived through the first movie. Either way, we open up to her getting murdered in the first scene of the film. <laughs> now we have room for a whole new set of characters to get murdered and mutilated! What? Paul Holt is training some counselors to run a camp not far from the original camp. Which they now refer to as Camp Blood. Paul tells his budding counselors about Jason Voorhees. He, uh, he drowned in the lake. Remember? No, he wants revenge. They chopped off his mom's head. You get it. He does this to scare them away from entering the property of Camp Blood. As the film goes on, we get Friday the 13th Part 1, but this time, the killer... Who could it be? Wears a potato sack over his head. <laughs> Ooh, spooky. Guinea, Paul's girlfriend, seems to be the final girl. And we stay with her until she runs into a rundown shack, which we find out... Big spoiler alert! Jason is living there and keeps his mother's severed head on the counter. I'm going to guess for fucking. Ginny then tricks Jason into thinking she's his mother by putting on her his dead mom's sweater. Wow, Jason, you're pretty stupid. After that, all is well and Jason is dead. Or is he? Friday the 13th Part 2 is not my favorite entry in this franchise, but it definitely kicks more ass than the first one. The killer is more menacing. And the atmosphere at times I find a bit darker. Now I'm aware that Jason does not have his iconic hockey mask yet, but hey, suck a fuck! The gore in this movie was pretty good too. I found nothing to complain about. The music is more of the same, really. Not much has changed from the first movie. Simonopography was great. Collations were great. The sets were great. The titling was great. My only real complaint here is the cheesy dialogue. What's green and red and goes 100 miles an hour? What? Frog in a blender. <laughs> ah, that was fun. Because the acting isn't bad, and the characters in the most scenes were pretty enjoyable, too. This is hardly a complaint. But this was not my favorite actor to play Jason. He was okay, I mean, you know, whatever. I can recommend this movie because it is an important entry into the franchise, being how our, you know, main villain Jason is finally introduced. It also set some standards after the first film that gave the franchise its own style. Dark with a hint of cheese. Look. Looks like shit. Appeal. I love it. And formula. Teenagers die violently. Don't do drug. 6.5. It's not my favorite, but you should watch it. You piece of shit! Thanks for watching, guys. Keep watching videos. Uh, I do this sometimes. I make videos. Watch them. Uh, thanks. Sorry for calling you a piece of shit. That magic production.